New season means new items and some pretty crazy ones at that, so let's dive into our complete itemization guide for Season 13. We'll be breaking down all the new items and providing you guys with an outlook on which champions will benefit most from the changes. But before we get into it, be sure to check out Skillcapped if you want to truly get better at League of Legends. We're the only service that offers a money back guarantee if you don't climb at least 5 divisions while actively using our service. We do this because our service really does work, and if it doesn't work for you, you shouldn't pay. Learn more at the end of this video or click the link in the description below. Let's start things off with some nostalgia, as Spear of Shoujin will be returning to the Rift for Season 13 as a legendary item. It was way back in Season 9 when the likes of Jax and Riven were dominating the Rift due to Spear of Shoujin, and we could see something similar once again. Coming in at 3400 gold, Shoujin will provide 65 AD, 300 health, and 20 ability haste, so it's evidently still going to be an amazing item for bruiser or fighter champions. For the new passive, instead of providing you with crazy dueling power when using your ultimate, it's going to work a little different now. First passive is called Dragon Force, and will provide non-ultimate abilities with scaling ability haste, and the effect will be lessened for ranged champions. The second passive is Exigency, which will offer increased movement speed based on your missing health. So all in all, the new spear does not seem nearly as broken as the old spear of Shoujin. Due to the amount of ability haste you can acquire from new spear, it's definitely going to be most useful on spellcasting fighters. Riven, Jax, Olaf, Aatrox, and Fiora are the champs we expect to see the best results with the item. One fighter item being changed for Season 13 is Ravenous Hydra. Cost of the item remains the same, however the AD is being lowered from 70 to 65. 20 Ability Haste and 10% Omni Vamp will remain as the other stats. The Cleave passive is staying as well, however a brand new passive called Carnivorous is being added. You will gain AD and Omni Vamp wherever you kill a minion and that amount will be doubled when killing a champion, large monster, or cannon minion. The caveat however is that you will lose 50% of your stacks on death. All in all, 5 less AD in exchange for this new passive is going to be a really good trade off. Snowball power for champions like Fiora and Camille will become even scarier now. Tank items are seeing a massive revamp with Sunfire Aegis and Turbo Chem Tank now being legendary items along with 3 new tank mythics being added. Let's first have a look at what Riot has done to Sunfire, Chem Tank, and Frostfire and then we'll cover all the new additions. Sunfire will now cost 2800 gold instead of 3200, however the magic resist and ability haste are completely gone. You will now have 400 health instead of 450 health and 50 armor instead of the 35 armor and 35 magic resist. Sunfire will still have the same immolate passive. So what we can gather by this adjustment is that Sunfire will now become a situation second or third pickup in games where the enemy team is majority physical damage. So with Sunfire now providing more armor and zero magic resist, Chem Tank will be changed in the opposite direction. You will now have zero armor from Chem Tank, but instead of 25 magic resist, the item now provides 50 MR. Cost will remain that same at 2800 gold, and Chem Tank will now have 500 health instead of 450, and 10 ability haste instead of 20. Active will remain the same and provide you bonus movement speed on use. This actually really sucks for someone like Ramus because Chem Tank was such a great item for him, but now that it offers zero armor, it's less valuable. Since Chem Tank is now a legendary item, it will slot in as second or third purchase in games where the enemy comp is majority magic damage. The fact you can't build Chem Tank every game now will hurt certain champs like Volibear and Ramus, but most tanks won't really be affected by the change. Frostfire Gauntlet will be renamed to Iceborne Gauntlet, and unlike Sunfire and Chemtank, which will now be legendary items, Iceborne will remain a mythic item. Cost is going up from 2800 to 3000 gold, health is down from 450 to 400, armor is up from 25 to 50, however the magic resist is being removed entirely. 20 ability haste will remain. Instead of the immolate passive, Spellblade will be the passive on Iceborne Gauntlet. After using an ability, your next attack will be enhanced with additional damage and create a slow field for 2.5 seconds. The primary target hit will be applied a 100% stronger slow and their damage reduced by 10% against you for 2.5 seconds. The mythic passive will grant all legendary items 50 health, 5% tenacity, and 5% slow resist. Tanks who have low cooldown spells that can take full advantage of the Spellblade passive are going to be liking Iceborne the most. Malphite, Maokai, Shen, Sejuani, Nasus, Poppy, and Trundle are who we expect to perform the best of the item. If you're wondering about Ezreal, the Spellblade proc will be less effective for ranged champions, so it's hard to say how strong it will end up for him. As a situation will pick up into a full AD comp is where it would be most optimal on Ezreal. The first brand new tank mythic is called Heart Steel. Costing you 3200 gold, it's going to provide the exact same amount of health as Warmogs with 800. 
200% base health regen and 20 ability haste are the other base stats. The passive looks pretty nuts as it's called Colossal Consumption. You will charge up a powerful attack over 3 seconds while within 700 range of the enemy. The charged attack then deals 125 plus 6% of your max health as bonus physical damage and grants 10% of that amount as permanent max health. Passive will have a 30 second cooldown per target. The mythic passive will grant all other legendary items 1% increased health and 6% champion size. Alright, this item looks completely nuts for tanks that scale with health. Zack, Mundo, Tom Kench, and Scion are 4 champions who you should be looking to try heart steal on. The fact you gain bonus health every time you use the passive provides these tanks with a really nice snowball-y pickup. The more you can constantly fight the enemy, the harder you will scale, so in games where you can get ahead, the item will be super insane. On the flip side though, if you are behind and don't think you can fight the enemy, me very much, siding with one of the other tank items may end up being more valuable. Next item sounds like it should be the name of a new champion as it's called Jock Show the Protean. This one won't be another tank mythic but instead of providing a massive amount of health like Heart Steel, it's going to offer some resists. 400 health, 30 armor, 30 magic resist, and 20 ability haste are the stats. Item will be 200 gold cheaper than Heart Steel at 3000 gold. Voidborn Resilience is the passive and for each second in champion combat you will gain a stack granting 2 armor and magic resist up to 8 stacks. At max stacks you will become empowered, draining enemies around you for 3% of your max health as magic damage and healing for the same amount. Your resists are also increased by 10% until end of combat when you reach max stacks. The mythic passive will grant all other legendary items 5 armor and magic resist. So the Heart Steel and Jock Show passives have very definitive strengths. Heart Steel is more of a burstier upfront damage tank item, whereas Jock Show is going to be best suited for your extended team fights. Heart Steel is looking like the more offensive tank pickup, whereas Jock Show is the all around best defensive purchase. Other than tanks, who else could abuse the item? Udyr is going to be an interesting Jock Show user as he likes those extended skirmishes. We expect certain AP bruisers to find success with it as well. Amumu, Singed, Swain, and Mordekaiser are a few that will really benefit from the ramping effects of Jock Show passive. The third and final new tank mythic being added for preseason is called Radiant Virtue. For 3000 gold, the shopkeeper will provide you with 400 health. 30 armor, 30 magic resist, and 20 ability haste, so the exact same base stats as Jock Show. The passives are what will set the items apart, as Radiant Virtue's passive is called Guiding Light. When casting your ultimate, you will increase max health by 10% for 9 seconds. For this duration, you and allies within 1200 range gain 15 non-ultimate ability haste and heal for 1% of your max health every 3 seconds, increased by up to 100% based on that champion's missing health. The cooldown on this passive will be 60 seconds. Mythic passive will grant all other legendary items 100 health. This will be a really interesting tank item on champions who like to teamfight and play off their ultimate's cooldown. Shen, Maokai, Orn, Kled, Sejuani, and Malphite are a few that are likely to benefit the most from Radiant Virtue. Abyssal Mask is being reworked into what will be a much more valuable item. It's going to remain a legendary item and for 3000 gold provide 500 health, 300 mana, 40 magic resist, and 10 ability haste. The passive is called Eternity and it will restore mana equal to 8% pre-mitigation damage taken from champions and restore health equal to 20% of mana spent. The second passive is Unmake and it will reduce nearby enemies magic resist while also providing yourself with magic resist based on how many enemies are nearby. This Unmake passive was already on the old Abyssal Mask, so what Riot has done here is add a whole new passive being Eternity while also adding 50 health, 5 magic resist, and 300 mana for an extra 300 gold. A Sapphire Crystal alone provides 250 mana and costs 350 gold, so these changes to Abyssal Mask are without a doubt net positive. Of course, Abyssal Mask will remain a situational item, however it should slot in way more often as a second pickup into heavy AP comps on champs like Orn, Maokai, Amumu, Cho'Gath, Malphite, and Sejuani. The fact that this new Abyssal Mask provides mana and a crazy strong new passive will make it a much more valuable pickup. Randween's Omen is another tank item that will have a bunch of its stats shifted around. Cost is going up from 2700 to 3000 gold. Health is up from 250 to 400. Armor down from 90 to 60. Old Randuins only reduce the enemy's critical strike damage when you hit them with the active slow, but it's now going to reduce the enemy's crit by 20% all the time. Active slow and rock solid passive are both still on the item, so the passive effects of Randuins have become stronger. Randuins will definitely be that strong situational tank item to really shut down crit focused team comps. Jungle's starting items are being completely revamped for preseason, as you will now have three brand new options to choose from. You will now be given a jungle companion that follows you around, helps you clear, and offers a bonus effect later in the game. 
To gain this bonus effect, you will need to feed your companion 40 treats, which you acquire by killing large monsters, and they will also drop every 60 seconds. When you consume a treat, you will be granted 50 gold. This means it will definitely take a little while until you gain the bonus effect. The first item is called Scorch Claw Pup. When you fed your Scorch Claw with 40 treats and is fully grown, it will periodically cause your next damaging effect to slow and damage enemy champions. This is going to be the starting item you prioritize on your Snowbally Carry junglers. The second option you have is Gust Walker Hatchling. Instead of slowing and damaging enemies, its passive effect will grant you with movement speed after entering brush or killing monsters. Rengar and Nidalee mains are going to be loving this one, however we feel like the majority of junglers are going to prioritize Scorch Claw. Moss Stomper Seedling is the third jungle starting item, and when fully grown, its passive is going to grant you a shield that regens either after killing monsters or when out of combat. For the duration that the shield holds, you will gain 20% tenacity and slow resist. Tanks or utility junglers will find the best use out of this one, however, we assume it will be the least popular of the three, unless the shield is super nuts. Rod of Ages was removed for the past two seasons, but it's being resurrected for season 13 as an AP mythic. For 3200 gold, you will receive 60 ability power, 300 health, and 400 mana. The scaling power of Rod is back, as you will gain 20 health, 20 mana, and 4 ability power every 60 seconds, for a maximum of 200 health, 200 mana, and 40 ability power. The passive is called Eternity, and it will restore mana equal to 8% pre-mitigation damage taken from champions, and restore health equal to 20% of mana spent. For every 250 health or mana restored from Eternity, you will gain 25% decaying movement speed for 2 seconds. Mythic passive will grant all other legendary items 5 ability haste. We can sense Rise mains drooling over their keyboards right now, as this is exactly what the champion needs back in the game. Any of these battle mages like Anivia, Cassiopeia, and Swain are going to be the best users of the item. Cassidin is one of the few assassins that will likely side with Rod. Lilia, Singed, and possibly even Cho'Gath are a few others who will have some potential with Rod of Ages. When's the last time you saw somebody build Navori Quick Blades? To be honest, I kinda forgot the item even existed, so it's seeing a mini rework for preseason. Only one change to the base stats, as the item will now provide 20 ability haste instead of 30. The passive is what's being altered, as you will now need 60% crit to activate it. Upon 60% crit, your attacks will reduce the cooldown of non-ultimate abilities by 15%. This looks very similar to the old Quick Blades passive, however there is one detail that is massive. Previously you would only be given the cooldown reduction upon critting the enemy with the old Quick Blades, but the new one will reduce ability cooldowns on every single attack. A second passive is even being added called Impermanence. This will allow your abilities to deal bonus damage based on your critical strike chance. Overall, definitely net positive changes for Quick Blades and a win for champions like Lucian and Zaya. If there's one champion who's going to thrive with Quick Blades, it will be Lucian, as he's a spellcasting ADC who can become extremely shifty with all the cooldown reduction on basic abilities. Alright guys, before we wrap this up, let's tell you a little more about Skill Cap. So, we offer a 5 division rank up guarantee, and think that's a pretty crazy thing to offer. It's like a gym membership guaranteeing you'll get ripped. Your local gym would go bust if they offered that, right? Not us. We've offered this for years because our service really does work work. It works so well in fact that we're able to produce by far the largest catalog of premium league guides on the internet. We add over 20 videos a week. With over 1600 guides curated into over 100 courses, no one can compare. We've also sent challenger players into ELO Hell 714 times and counting where they commentate how to carry live. They also respond to all questions asked. Sign up today for as little as $6.99 a month if you are serious about improving. So there you have it guys, a complete rundown of the item changes heading into Season 13. Thank you all so much for watching, and we will catch you in the next one.